Texas A&M head coach Jimbo Fisher joining us here. And coach, it just feels like all everybody's talking about is expectations for anybody. And that's the case here at Media Days. But for your team, especially with what you did last year in year one, they're very high. So mm -hmm. how do you manage that knowing that you already had high expectations for your group? Well, I think you have to learn to embrace. I think that's part of being a championship team. You have to embrace that culture that we're expected to have success. We know we're going to have success. Now, but more importantly, how do you have success? I think, it's like I say, everybody says, we want to win, we want to be good. But I think embracing the grind, as I say, and learning to understand to put yourself in position that when those moments come, you can play. And I think that's, that's where I think we're growing. And I think those guys now are understanding what we want and how we want it. Coach, you lose Sternberger, you lose Williams off of an offense that's mm -hmm. pretty good. You do return Kellerman and some receivers, but how do you replace that much offense missing from this team? Well, I don't know if you ever replace those guys, but those guys set the standard for how things are done. I think Jay Sean Corbin has had an outstanding spring. You saw him last year for us as a freshman. Uh, I mean, he averaged over six yards a carry, kickoff returner, phenomenal hands out of the backfield, and the depth we have at running back. Uh, the young tight ends are very productive, and I think also a step up in wideouts. I think Courtney Davis, who was outstanding at the end of the year, you saw Kendrick Rogers, Jamon Osmond, and some other guys in that group. They'll have to step it up, but I think that young group of tight ends and those backs, I, you know, I think they'll play very well, really do. You were impressed by the way that Kellen Mond last year really took everything by the horns, mm -hmm. came to you and said he wanted to learn even more about your offense. He already showed some of that early on, but what progression have you seen from him even since then that encourages you? Know, you know, I think in the spring is recognition of things and recognition when he got the matchups he wanted. You know what I mean? All right, there's one thing, no one to play. All right, and this is coverage tells me I can go here. But then on certain coverages, you may have two different matches. You know, sometimes on that, when they're, they get soft cover, they get in quarters, they get in three hours. Which which guy gives me the best matchup outside? Which guy gives me the opportunity to hit the best deep ball? You know what I mean? And knowing when to take that shot. When, you, know, it, you know, it's second and eight here. I may not want to go as deep here. You know, it's first and ten. I got an opportunity to throw a deep ball. I may want to look there. I think those things, those little things like as a coach you see, those are the conversations we're having. And he's coming to me with that information, which really excites me. Mm. Coach, with a schedule that has uh, Georgia and LSU on the road, and then just for fun you threw in Clemson in there. <laughs> But I'm going to different direction. What do you say to people in the country to say, how dare you guys line up and play Texas State or UTSA you know, or Lamar with a schedule as loaded as you guys have? People focus on those other three teams like, I can't believe Texas A&M is playing those bums. Well, man, I, here's the thing. I think one for football, I think it's good. And, here, and I'm going to say this. People don't believe this, and I, and I really do. But first, we went and played Clemson in a home-and-home. -home. I mean, there's not a bigger non-conference. We play in the best we appreciate you for that. Yeah, thank that. you. And, and also, <laughs> but here, I, I believe if we don't spread the wealth, and I know I'm not one of these coaches who says you should play all Power Five teams. Where do these guys, the money for them to have their programs, where does it come from? Mm. They, if they don't have these days, where does it come from? And I'm going to tell you something. You say, well, what does that affect us? Well, what about myself, who was not a Division One football player? Would I be sitting here without that opportunity to have a scholarship yeah. to yeah. play? And then you're saying all these high school football players, football has been under an attack for a while about what's going on. Yeah. And all these guys out there playing football, right? and none of them all are going to be Division One players. They're going to be Division Two, one to FCS, Division Three, you know, Division Three NEIA players. Well, when those guys quit playing football because there's no opportunities in college, if we don't filter that money down, if it yeah. doesn't filter into those programs, then you're going to kill high school football. And then the great players in which we're able to recruit. They're not going to be there and, and developed as much because not going to be, football's not going to be as big. And, and I, I really believe that. That's an interesting point because people don't look at it that way. No one looks at it from how it helps out the Lamars and the Texas A's and UTSAs to play you guys. They'll look at it as in, why don't you guys just play against teams on your level so that we can see who's better, who's worse. But I, I agree with you, and I like what it does for those schools. It, it generates income all the way down, and you got to do it. And that goes back into high school football. Because if those kids don't have the opportunities to have, all right, I, not everybody's a Division One player. If they, they can be an FCS player. They know they don't have that opportunity to go to college, which is that the only way a lot of those kids go. They're going to expand into other sports and figure out ways to get scholarships in other sports. Coach, it was brought up earlier today to Kirby Smart when he was at the podium about the record of Saban's former assistants against him. Somebody's still got to beat him. How can it be your team? Line up and play 60 minutes of football. I mean, you got to go play this. And they've established themselves. He's established himself as a great coach, and they have a great program. You just got to line up and play them. I mean, you got you got to go play a, a very good football game for 60 minutes, and don't worry about the outcome. Go play. All right, it's Alabama. Okay, we play them every week. Expect to beat them. Look to beat them. That's, they they expect to win, so don't we. And I think that's the approach you have to take. And when you're in that moment to beat them, don't expect like you shouldn't be there.
Coach, White on the defensive game. side, you, a lot of, uh, not a lot of guys coming back, starters coming back. So there's a lot of pieces to replace on the defensive side. Um, what has been the focus there? What can we expect out of your defense? Well, first of all, is up front. I, I'm excited about our front as, even more so than I was a year ago. I'm real. I think Matabuki and those guys up front, Trey Brown, uh, Michael Clemens coming back who didn't get to play last year, uh, Trey up front. I mean, those guys are really athletic guys. We've got good depth. And the secondary, we've had four safeties that played. We'd have four or five corners that played a lot of football. So I'm excited there. And then the backers, Buddy Johnson coming back. But we also get Anthony Hines back, who was a five-star guy a couple years ago who got hurt in the very beginning of the year. He's back in that mix. Okay, KK's back in that mix. So we feel confident there. When, in the spring we had, I thought they played really well. So, and, but the key is, to me, of all that, you got to have the front guys. And I think we do. I, I like our front. As we wrap up here, I want to know what went into the selection of the tie because I think it's especially strong this year. Well, I got a little A&M in it. Got a little A&M. Still got a little of the blue suits. I got a little match there. A little mix and match. It. So Joey would like to borrow it later, so we'll work on that. We'll yeah, when we get done, I'm going to need that for the show later. Yeah, we're going to do a little right. trade out. Thanks I'll so much, Jimbo, for You're sure. welcome. We're so glad you're watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, make sure you subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. We'll see you there.